One, two, three. Action. What is up guys? Fahan here with Za once again and today we have Greg. How are you Greg? Hey fine. Thank you so much for coming out yeah. to do this bike review with us. Uh, I mean uh, this is a very rare bike, huh? mm -hmm. I must say. <laughs> uh, Honda CBR 1000. 1100XX right. uh, Also known Blackbird. as the Blackbird Yeah, uh, Super Blackbird lah <laughs> yeah, So from what I read online This bike is actually in production since 1996 till mm -hmm. 2007 mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's actually not named after a bird lah It's yeah. named after the Lockheed SR-71 Blackbird mm -hmm. Correct, um, you know the X-Men? Yeah the, the, the plane? Uh. That is the Blackbird oh. So <laughs> this is supposed to look Somewhat like like the Blackbird lah. Uh -huh. <laughs> Consider because the the Blackbird back then was the fastest plane yes. ever mm. produced. They name it after that. Yeah, <laughs> and this is this happens to be at that time lah. Mm, at that time, fastest production bike. Yes, and it's actually built to compete with the. Uh, Kawasaki yeah, ZX11 Kawasaki ZX11 eh? Yes. Before Greg actually tell us a story about his Blackbird, I'm gonna give a bit of background about it. Eh? Built to compete and unseat the Kawasaki Ninja ZX11 as the world's fastest production motorcycle, the Honda CBR1100XX Super Backbird had a production run from 1996 to 2007. With a top speed of 287.3 km per hour, it was later rivaled to the Suzuki Hayabusa two years later, which topped off at a higher top speed of 312 km per hour. The bike's name is a nod to the Lockheed SR71 the world's fastest production aircraft. Engine is a 1137cc liquid cool 4 stroke 16 valve DOHC inline 4 with fuel injection and a 6 speed manual transmission. Due to strict vehicle control laws, the population of the Honda Super Blackbird has dwindled significantly, with it rarely seen on Singapore streets. Alright guys, so shout out to our sponsor Lippy Moly. Do check out their online store for awesome motorbike care related products. Support us by clicking on the link below to view the range of products. Or use our promo code upon checking out. Alright Greg, so uh, why did you get the you know, CBR 1100XX mm -hmm. Blackbird as your bike? Long story short, you know, I was looking to tour a lot. I was touring a lot of my Super 4, but you know, I just didn't like Putting a top box, uh, to me, putting a top box really mess with the the bike's uh, image. The, yeah, aerodynamics and the image, uh -huh. So <laughs> when I took off my top box on my Super Four, it made touring very difficult. Mm. You know, there was no side boxes available. There's nothing. And you know, um, when I'm going long distance, you know, when um, the normal speed you're going at in in Malaysia. It's not very um, good for the Super 4, I would say. The engine was getting a lot of stress. So I began to look for a class 2 bike. Um, initially, I looked for, I was looking at VFR, you know, those sport touring, those really sport, sport touring motorcycles mm -hmm. <laughs> that, that really, that, that have, they come with panniers and, you know, a single seat. So single seat as in like that. Mm. Um, reason being, um, I can modify the seat according to my size. You know, all these bikes, all these big bikes, right, they are usually um, meant for, you know, big more people. When I sit on the bike, I'm usually sitting very close to the tank. And so my partner is usually sitting on top here. And there'll be a big space here that you can put my McDonald's ayam goreng in the middle. And nothing will happen to it. That's how much space there is. I look for this type of seats instead of those, you know, nowadays it's usually split seats. Mm -hmm. yeah. So this type of seat, I'm able to put more padding here so that my partner can sit closer to me. Mm -hmm. And it's a bit more comfortable, you know, I can shave the seat, I can do anything I want. Mm. Yeah, and then um, I was looking for a sports touring motorcycle. And nowadays, all the sports touring is, I'll call them, uh, uh, I'll split them into adventure touring and uncle touring. <laughs> so Uncle Tori is like the ST, ST. Oh, okay. So it's, European, yes, yeah. it's very comfortable. I love that bike. You know, it's, oh, it's super, yes, it's super comfortable. Uh. But it's very uncle. Yeah, and <laughs> also, yes, okay. uh, but, but no offense, but I really, really want an ST. So anybody want to sell me ST, right? I, I, I'm looking for it. Yeah. So I was looking for a bit, some, something like, you know, when you ride in Singapore, you take out the panniers, you know, it looks like a sports bike. You can play a bit like a sports bike, uh. yet something heavy. I kind of narrowed down to, you know, a VFR 1002, uh, Hayabusa, and Blackbird. So actually, I was looking at a VFR, and suddenly I saw, I think, a few Blackbirds on sale. So I said, okay, you know, inline-four engine cannot go wrong, because, you know, a VFR, the, the, the V engine, the Singapore mechanics are not very familiar with it, and it's quite rare. You know, I'm a bit scared of um, excessive speed. You know, so high boost up to me was, uh, like, really at the back of my mind. I didn't really want to touch it. I'm a bit, yeah. <laughs> um, those people that it's ride high boost big balls. Too beastly for you, yes, it's, I, I don't have, I don't, my, my, my balls not heavy yet. <laughs> not that heavy yet. Yeah. 
So, you know, I started to, I, I, I looked at the blackbird and then I realized that, you know, some of the blackbirds come with OEM panniers. Mm -hmm. So these are actually, these actually came from Honda. Uh, the bags are actually contoured underneath here, mm -hmm. around the fairing and on top of the exhaust as well. I looked at the blackbird, I test ride it and it was very good. I saw one that was quite cheap and I just pulled the trigger. La. Although it came with some problems. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna elaborate on that later. La. <laughs> but this one you bought it from a shop or from a person? I bought it from a private seller. He was actually a collector. Mm -hmm. So the bike was sitting there for a very, very long period of time. Uh -huh. Yeah, so you, can, you could see a bit of rust, you know, a bit of, of, of maintenance not, not really done. La, you know. When I bought it, it was uh, covered and a lot, a lot of dust on the cover <laughs> on the cover as well. So at uh, that time when you bought it, how much did it sell you actually? I bought it at 6,000. Uh, oh. It was close to four years left of COE. Oh, okay. So okay. it was, I think, four years and two months. Uh, so this, uh, I bought it last year. So this is currently 17 years old. 6K uh, for 6K how many years for, left? Four years. Four years. Cheap, I mean, she renewed the COE one time. La. Yes. Ah, yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, I mean, cheap by today's COE. La. <laughs> You know, now a rocks right, will have higher value than this bike. <laughs> new Aerox. Before you were riding this bike, what other bikes were you riding aside from the Super 4? I was mainly riding the Super 4 because I got it off my father-in-law. So, you know, uh, we kind of shared the bike after a while. I bought it over from him. That was my main bike. And then I was just buying cheap bikes to play around. So, like, you know, I rode a Gilera. I rode a, I rode a rocks, I rode NC750. Mm -hmm. Uh, MTO3 and you know I just play around my uh, my friends bikes lah. How would you describe in your own words its performance, its uh, agility, nimbleness in traffic, mm. um, I mean its, its pickup, handling? No this is a sports touring bike lah mm. right. It's neither a touring touring bike nor is it a sports bike so you, you compromise on a lot. It's very heavy, mm -hmm. the pickup is not really there and the speed is not there. And the speed is not there, meaning, you know, it, it takes a bit of time to, to build up that speed. I mean, as you know, this is a fast bike. It can hit 300 kmph. Mm. Yes, and it haven't touched red line yet. But I don't have the balls to go that fast yet. Maybe because you need to hit a certain RPM before it actually... Yes. Like <laughs> VTEC, ah. <laughs> when it kicks in, ah, you will feel the rush. Yeah, um, yes, it's a, it's a powerful bike, but you know, it compromise a lot. But that is what I'm looking for, you know, something that's a bit sporty yet comfortable. As for, you know, like, filtering in traffic, this is... Uh, uh, not a city bike. When I put on the panniers, uh, cannot display at all. Mm. Yes. Oh dear. It's very, very. It's a, it's, it's a bit fatter. It's, I, I, I would say it's almost an adventure, adventure bike size. Yeah, so GS. Like yes. Uh, lane splitting is a bit of a problem with this. Even without panniers, right? Because it's heavy and with, with the uh, hydraulic clutch, right? It's a bit more difficult to split. Um, in traffic as well, uh, it gets very, very hot. I mean, uh, running the running temperature in Singapore is about hundred plus degrees. Ooh. Yeah, so it's constantly, I'm constantly sweating lah. And you know, just now I came right, I already, yeah, I already sweat. Oh you know, wow! <laughs> uh, I think highway also still sweat. Yeah, it's a hot bike, but you know, it's very smooth. I would, uh, I would say that you know, it's definitely almost as smooth as my 400 cc Honda. So what's your height, bro? I'm one seven two. And yeah. for the seating wise, is it comfortable for you? Um. Okay. So. Uh, you know, I in Singapore, I started to play around the back bike, so I drain to drop the fox a bit because I want to, you know, I want to act a bit lah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so more, if you drop the bike more fierce, yeah, right. a bit more fierce. I'm not so touring lah. <laughs> but um, when I sit on the bike, it's a bit, um, a bit big for me. So as I said, you know, I can sit here. My partner can sit behind, mm. and we can put one box of one box of KFC in the center. No problem, mm. one. Yeah. Or sometimes, you know, if you can even squeeze on the same seat. And you know, there is no, none of that, you know, that the problems that, you know, you slide up the tank, mm. you can sit quite comfortably in the same seat. So, you know, this is a very comfortable bike. It's a, like, it's really quite big. Once you go black, you never go back. <laughs> and one thing, yeah. one fun fact, it's only available in black, guys. So what do you think? Does it come in black? Mm. No other colour. Yeah, la, if not, yeah. if it is in, available in white, then it should be called white bird. <laughs> Black is the fastest color. Uh, <laughs> usually the, the blue one or the red one right, cannot go as fast one. You know, owning an old bike that is out of production and then which is probably, sorry to say, uh, de decreasing in value. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, how do you manage to like, okay, this bike was actually evolved in an incident. Maybe you want to share or what happened actually. Okay, when I bought the bike, um, it came with this thing called uh, 25 knocks. Mm. Uh, 25 blink, sorry. So the 25 blink, um, it comes from the FI light. So, mm. you know, when, when you start riding and then suddenly the FI light on, right, that is danger already. Oh, uh, that, okay. is, uh, that is your error code. So, um, when 25 blinks, it means knock sensor. But along the years, you know, the, uh, the Blackbird members across the globe, they realise that it's not really a knock sensor. Maybe 20% of the problem is a knock sensor. 80% of the time is either the CDI, the ECU, or it's the harness. I, ha I had this issue. Um, the previous owner changed the knock sensor, he changed the harness, but it still had the issue. So, it was left with the CDI. Uh, the CDI cost over $2,000 just to bring in. Wow. Mm. Fortunately, the community is quite supportive, so I managed to source one for a cheaper price, you know, because the Blackbirds are all, 
I would say a lot of them are affected by the NEA. Mm. The, yeah. So they all had to scrap. That's so sad, yeah. 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 Uh. So um, you know, um, the, the the whole group is very supportive. Um, they all have parts, you know, around. Now, you know, I do have a whole bike without the engine sitting at home. Oh. I'm, I have the swing arm. I have the exhaust. I have <laughs> engine covers. I have everything, lah. Basically, yeah. And each of the members have their own parts around. So you know, if you really need parts, right, mm -hmm. you can go to you, can, you. You just text the group, and you know, very ah. very supportive group. How many uh, Blackbird owners are there in Singapore? Um, I tried the count, Last but count? sometimes you know, you think I, I think like you know, I really okay. These are all the people, right? Then suddenly one, one will pop up of nowhere, and then we're like, who is this? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you know, I estimate around fourteen to fourteen to twenty of us left uh, that actually own see, Blackbirds. See. Yeah. Very soon, the blackbird is going to go extinct. In Singapore, yes, mm -hmm. uh, but in the UK, there's actually a, a shop called Jaws Motorcycles mm -hmm. that specialises in blackbird parts only. Oh. So they just sell blackbird parts in the UK, uh, but the shipping is quite expensive. But you know, they sell everything original. At least there is a, a somewhere to source out for original blackbird parts. You know. Yes. Uh, as for you know, like all the all your fuel pump and everything, right? Um, fortunately, the bike shops are gonna kill me, right? You know, like your your bike, your bike fuel pump, you can actually go and source the actual part number so for hondas a lot of their fuel pumps are all from mitsubishi oh. and you know what other brands are from mitsubishi what? suzuki yeah. oh. <laughs> so suzuki swift fuel pump can fit inside this bike and the suzuki oh, the car. yes the car fuel pump you can just do a bit of modification it'll cost you a hundred dollars versus oh, you go okay. to the bike shop right and they will slap you with a 400 500 dollars deal <laughs> yes okay that's so cool man mm. so i'm not too sure about other i'm not too sure about other um other bikes um i tried to search my super force mm -hmm. but i cannot find the actual part number but if mm -hmm. you are good enough i think you can find the part number for 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 mitsubishi and then you can go and find a uh, look around uh. and there's a good hack <laughs> so, so speaking of uh, rarity yeah hmm. like you said you where you go and do the bike actually i mean given mm -hmm. that this is an old bike are hmm. mechanics scared to touch of it around? i would say that usually i go to the old school mechanics so i used to go to ally motorsport at Premier Kaki Bukit, mm -hmm. but he has since closed down. He wants to open shop back in JB. Currently, this bike I go to Panjang Garage. So you know, if any of your viewers have been to Panjang Garage the past few months, <laughs> my bike has been sitting there because it's very difficult to take out the fairing. It takes a lot of time. Mm -hmm. So I usually just go down and take out the fairing myself, do a bit of repairs for myself. Uh, I just you know pay Panjang a bit of copy money, ah, and then I will put everything back. You know, because it took me almost two hours just to put the fairing back together. So you mean mm. you go there, you open up yourself, you repair yourself, then you pay the. Yeah, I, I give him a bit of copy money or not, I buy, I, I buy him drink lah. Yeah, he helped me bring in the parts. Okay. Yeah, because uh, I understand, it understand. takes some time to open up, even the engine casing takes some time. I've been to Panjang and it's very, very popular. Mm. And the waiting time can easy. be... Yes. And the waiting time can be very, very long. Mm. So if you're doing like a, like a big, a bit of a major thing, mm -hmm. you can put your bike there at 11 a.m., right? Mm -hmm. And you can sit there for the whole day, right? He will maybe finish at 8 p.m. Mm. So it's usually, for me, i rather just do two hours, right? Then I go home, I cover the bike, I go home. I come back and, uh, next day, I go and do it myself a bit. Then at least I learn how to do. Because this is a touring bike after all. Mm -hmm. If I'm stuck in Thailand, right, and I don't know how to do simple repairs, right, then, yeah. then you know, yeah, I die already. Uh, this bike also very, very difficult to, to tow back. Oh, that's why. Mm. You, can, you can just put, pick, uh, put this on the pickup and then, mm. right. And it's not, I, I, I mean, I'm sure that not a lot of you know, those roadside mechanics can do this bike also. Yes. So, you know, I have to, I have to equip myself with the skill. La, and mm -hmm. I mean, now COVID, right, what, what, what a better time to do it. From looking at the condition of your bike, uh, <coughs> it looks brand new. <laughs> like you, you recently respray it. Uh. Yes, I respray so it. So, that time you were involved in an incident. Yes. Uh, what happened actually? <laughs> so, this, this bike uh, comes with uh, CBS, predecessor to ABS. Uh -huh. So, CBS means combined braking system, mm -hmm. which means if I break my front brake, my rear brake will have one piston that will break as well. Mm. Mm. And if I break my rear brake, my front piston will break as well. Mm. Yeah, so it's connected together. I think VFR and one other bike has it from Honda. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what happened was that you know um, it was raining, I was lane splitting. I, I shouldn't be with this bike, la, but I was lane splitting. I jam brake and I got hit behind I got hit by another bike from behind. Fortunately, this bike, the braking system was so good that I managed to brake in time, but the uh, bike behind wasn't so fortunate it hit me. Yeah, so there was minimal damage. To your bike lah. To my bike. His um, bike? Um, his bike even less damage because I cushioned his fall. So uh. he fell on my bike. <laughs> yes. So he was but uh, but he was burned quite badly on my exhaust. Uh. But you know the just the left side of the fairing was gone. Mm -hmm. So I, I went to I went to source for one one set of fairings, we sprayed everything and put it back together. Uh, then which is yeah. how you find the other bike that got scrapped, right? Yes. Mm. <laughs> yeah, so I asked ask around the group and somebody scrapped the bike, you know, had a lot of parts and yeah, I think this is a, quite a unique bike. Um I'm, I stop, I I spoke to a lot of older riders and you know whenever I ride this out right, they're like, How come you know this bike? This bike older than you eh? <laughs> yeah, and then they always, they always come and tell me, you know, the blackbird, right? You know, you close your eyes, you think of a bike. Mm -hmm. It's usually in the shape of blackbird 
or in the shape of you know if you are like super sports fan, uh. you'll be in the shape of uh, Panning Gale. Mm-hmm. But if you are like you know just a bike bike, it's usually the shape of, uh, a blackbird shape. <laughs> so a lot of people say that you know the blackbird brought them into riding lah. It's a very legend, but unfortunately I cannot appreciate the the real legend of it because I I'm I'm quite young lah. So you know, uh, my time was when I grew up. It was already the you know the okay, Pani Gale, okay, yeah, oh, already yeah. this starting already. <laughs> yeah. Talking about going for long distance, how big is the fuel tank mm. and how 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 far can you go on a full tank? Uh, the fuel tank is 24 liters mm-hmm. with four liters of. Reserve, but you know, it's just one fuel tank. Like it's not like the old school that you have a separate fuel tank. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is one big fuel tank of 24 liters. Unfortunately, you know, it's old, so sometimes reserve comes out very early. <laughs> yeah, so I just got, judge my mileage. In Singapore, I get very bad fuel mileage. I get about 11 to 12 km per liter. I mean, my parents' Volkswagen has better fuel economy than this bike. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> it's an inline four. So I think it's it's almost a one liter engine, mm. and it's more fuel efficient than this bike. Mm. Yeah, but the bike cannot go 300 lah. Oh, maybe because it has to do with the age of the bike, eh? I'm yeah, um, not really. So the fuel pump is new. Most of the parts inside are replaced already. Oh, I see. Yes. Um, it's just that you know I have to move off and come stop and go and stop oh, go. Oh, so it um, doesn't do well in start stop traffic. Yes, it's, it's yeah. terrible in start stop traffic. I, I mean, yes. it's a touring bike. Yes, it's, it's best uh, on yes, when I mean, it's moving. In yeah. Singapore, I ride maybe gear three maximum. Oh. Yeah. If I ride on the highway and you know if I want to go faster, right? Um, at gear six. It's like it's like uh it's like a CBR already at gear six you know at 120 your 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 your, your engines a bit stuttering already. Oh my oh. god. Yeah, so it's 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 a cruising bike. It has very high cruising speed, but it ha- it doesn't have a lot of you know of potential speed. When I bought this earlier, uh, earlier last year, so before the lockdown, uh, when I shot up to Malacca, I got about 13 to 16 km per liter. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but uh, as you know like, I, I I told you just now when I came back I cannot quarantine uh, That was how unlucky I was. Buy the bike then cannot quarantine. Oh, like. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, that time when you Malacca, do you manage to whack the bike? This one legal liability lah, but huh. can lah. <laughs> yes yeah. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah but um, even in safe mode, I could hit uh maybe two four. Mm-hmm. Mm. In safe mode. At those kind of speed, mm. uh, does this bike vibrate a lot? I mean, is it uh, um, No, it's light? so heavy and it's aerodynamically so well designed mm-hmm. that, you know, when I rode, right, you don't even feel the wind push you anymore. You know, on my Super 4, right, when I'm riding, sometimes I'm fighting the wind. Mm-hmm. I, re- I physically have to turn my handlebar right, to turn back into the road. For this one, uh, I felt like I felt like a car, essentially. Then, when I, you know, when I zoom past all the cup tie, right, then like wow, I feel like I feel like king, you know. <laughs> like, hey, yo, hey, don't block me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah. uh, but they didn't know that my bike uh, was having CDI issues, like, and it was in safe mood the whole time, lah. Oh, <laughs> One of the reasons why I got this as a touring bike, um, you know, yeah. shout out to Shivam. Uh, you know, I, I watched his, I watched his Hayabusa, <laughs> and he had a Corbin, uh, yeah. he had a Corbin set, uh, which cost him about what? Four thousand plus. Four thousand yeah. is it? Uh, uh. so his Corbin oh, panniers, right, cost more than my bike, lah. But I didn't really like that Corbin uh, panniers because it was a bit, it's a bit small. You cannot really put a full face helmet inside. You can actually put a full face helmet inside. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you know, I like to tap out food from, from JB. La. So you know, you can really tap out a lot of food. La. <laughs> <laughs> but, hopefully they don't check. Uh. <laughs> uh, so anyway, we stick outside panniers. This mm. one, is, does it come in the bike when you bought it? Uh, no, I had to buy off another member. You know, like, you know, there's so little of the bikes left. You know, when mm-hmm. you have accessories, right, they really cannot let go because this rack it can only can be put on a blackbird. So I uh, when I got it off him, you know, he was like reluctant. Is, yeah, no. like he he no. yeah he he to him like you know it's part of he he have been riding for so long. Mm-hmm. But you know I, I think I'm the next generation of these riders really lah. Oh, and oh, and and to me he keep in the storeroom is is not as uh, I know I ride it I ride with it right. It's better than he keep in the storeroom. <laughs> yeah lah. <laughs> yeah. Sayang I mean, he he sayang until yeah, he go sayang, but yeah. then again is this thing is better off on a. Somebody who yeah. is actually using it. Yeah. Maintenance great for this bike. Is it on the high side? Given that it's an old bike, you know. Um. Actually, um. I had a bit of an issue with the electronics once in a while. But so far, you know, actually my Super Four. Uh. Because I ride it more often. The my Super Four costs a bit more lah. As for you know normal servicing, um, it's about three point eight to four liters of NG oil with filter. Mm-hmm. So it's about three point six without filter. Mm-hmm. So to me, it's. This bike is a touring bike, right? Um, they're riding, they're riding more than five thousand km, that type of thing. Mm. So the cost is actually not that much. Four spark plugs, also uh, the coolant is, is is very similar to you know all your thousand cc is really lah. But you no, know, this engine is really a solid engine. You know, for seventeen years, it served the owner well, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, so far, no problem. Yeah, so it's really a bulletproof engine. Even overseas, everybody says this engine is is like your Hayabusa engine. You know, I've seen Hayabusa's with like with like 200,000 km and it's, and it's still going strong. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully, right, uh, and when I ride 200,000 km, right, 
uh, y'all can interview me again. I do a long term <laughs> review on this. <laughs> okay. Yeah, but you know this engine is really a very strong engine. Um, mm. uh, once in a while, yes, the and the the, the O rings do give way. Mm -hmm. uh, but you know it's just O rings lah. Mm. Yeah, so yeah, it's, like it's quite cheap. Yeah, like. very 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 simple wear and tear. Very mm. very routine wear and tear. You know I can't help uh, but noticing that this bike uses chain instead of mm. uh, a shaft. Unlike uh, most of the other touring bikes uh, in its category, mm -hmm. have you rode a shaft-driven bike before, or how would you be able to compare? Um, I okay, I've test ridden a VFR uh, thousand two, which mm -hmm. is a shaft drive. Mm -hmm. um, I te I test ridden uh, my friend's uh, GS, mm -hmm. but you no, know, all these bikes are all very different. <laughs> As for you know the VFR and this, there was less less noise on the VFR. Mm -hmm. Uh, but and 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 um, I understand that you know on shaft there is less uh, maintenance required. I think every thousand just every, put shaft on only lah. No, no, and it's and it, yeah, and it's like maybe every um, twenty thousand km, thirty thousand km, then you put the you change your oil. Mm -hmm. Yeah, versus mm -hmm. this. Um, but you know to me, uh, I'm, I'm not a very technical person lah. To me, this shaft versus uh, chain is not a very big issue. Mm. Yeah, um, because you it's really take it or leave it. You know, if I want this bike, right, I cannot convert it to shaft. <laughs> if I like the VFR, right, I cannot convert it to to, to chain. chain. As for the chain, uh, for the shaft, right, um, I understand that you know there are, there have been multiple recalls for a, a few of the shaft bikes. Mm -hmm. uh, the GS for one has had a recall. Uh, the VFR also had a recall for the shaft, and this is easier, lah. You know, if I learn how to change my this chain, I learn how to maintain this chain. Mm -hmm. All my other bikes also I can do. So far, uh, what are the best memories? that you had with this bike considering that you know you, you had just owned it in a short period of time One and year. we are not able to really fully utilize its potential or to mm. go on a long touring mm. distance trip Melaka okay lah Melaka okay lah but uh. I mean I was like, if we can go to Thailand further, uh, oh, that, that was my plan uh. when I bought this bike. You know, I thought like, I COVID like SARS and that like, ah, uh, nothing. <laughs> and then you know, you know, my parents are like, you know, don't waste this type of money. And I'm like, ah, never mind. One, you, know, you all don't know. You all don't know. Turns out that. I don't know lah. <laughs> I don't know. Then I don't know. Like, 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 parents were so very salty. Yeah. <laughs> uh, everything they say will come true. Right? Yeah. So you know, I bought it in March. Then I think we locked down in late March. I bought it early March. Then mm. that's it lah. Die lor. Mm. So since then, put 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 at the car park. Just just every other day. Just so open. Don't mind me asking. How many times a week you actually ride the black belt? Um, I usually try to ride it on weekends. You know, it, it, it really depends on where I'm going. Uh. If I'm going to like Tanjong Pagar, right? You know, it's a 50-50. If I want that day, I want to, you know, go, go and show off a bit, lah, go and rev, rev, see big bike, right? Wow. <laughs> then I ride this. Lah. If not, then usually you know, I ride my smaller bikes because mm -hmm. to go to, on CTE, it's really uh, quite difficult to lane split within this bike. Lah. Is it because it's wide? Or it's, gen it's just very heavy. It's, you know, you know when, you, when you slow down, you accelerate, you slow down, accelerate, right? I'm using it in gear one, gear two. Oh, so okay. it gets very irritating and, and it gets very hot. So yeah. I, so, so for me, it's just like, oh. I know, but I, I mean, sound like you know, I'm complaining, but it's a big bike, lah. Mm. I mean, that's what you get, lah. So, but I, I, I agree with you. I mean, uh, trying to lane split in city is a very difficult. It's a very challenging yes. skill, you know, because if you compare to other expressway, city mm. is the tightest, you know. Yes. <laughs> I don't know if you if you realize it or not, but. To me, city is the tightest. Parts, parts of city is really like you cannot, you really cannot, you cannot split. Mm -hmm. Especially yeah. from uh, Yochukang to until Topayo. Uh -huh. Ah yes, oh. <laughs> that one is very tight. Yes, <laughs> to me it's a fantastic bike, but it comes with a bit of a bit of a compromise, lah. You know, and when you, I were to ride it, lah. Mm. Mm. So uh, being a legendary bike, right? Do you get a lot of looks when you're on the road? Um, people mistake me for TP when I ride. Because <laughs> uh, you know, I normally ride with uh, my helmet is black, uh -huh. my jacket is you no know, dark grey, uh -huh. and then you know with panniers, right? And um, and you know the old the old diversions came with halogen headlights, yeah. yellow headlights. So my headlights are also yellow. <laughs> so you know when when when, when I'm um, when I'm going on you know, on the highways at night, right? You know normally people just give me way. <laughs> they, they, they think that I'm TP. Right, uh, but you know, as for you know, like um, normal people, they don't really care. To them, mm -hmm. is um, uh, this 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 uh, this is the bike law, like like that. Just another bike. On yeah. The mm -hmm. uh, but this is a very a very good conversation starter with riders. When I park, you know, this abang will come up to me and he'll be like, "Hey, blackbird ah, wow, legend ah, you why you so young, you can ride ah." <laughs> then I just uh, usually usually I'm just like I'm like. Yeah, sorry, I I don't I high boost not for me lah. So you know, I, I, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, for riders, it's usually a very good uh, conversation starter. Mm. Especially you know the older riders, right? They're mm. like, wow, and I haven't seen this in a long time. So apparently, um, in the early two thousands, mm -hmm. it was very popular. Mm. And then slowly it just died off, died off, died off, died off, died off, and this is this is what's left lah. Yeah. So you mentioned that this this thing is um will be it's not under the, under the NEA rebate lah. So yes. basically cannot be renewed lah. Can be renewed. Oh, mm. I see. Um, it's a two thousand and four mod, two thousand and four ah, registered. Okay. So it's not under NEA. So I'm planning to renew it uh in 
2024. Mm -hmm. So, you know, please don't jack up the COE price. <laughs> I need to renew this. This cannot really. <laughs> yeah, don't kill all the blackbirds, please. 9,005. Yeah, yeah 9,005 is, is, is a lot. La. So, you know, to it's renew. It's crazy, man. It's yeah. crazy. Man. But to be honest, even at this price, this bike, I will renew. So, you can mm. say uh, yeah. you cannot put a price tag on this bike. Mm. Uh, can uh, if whoever want to buy this right, you can put a price on this bike. I can sell one. You know. the, the the new the new uh, GS right, looking very good this year. <laughs> so you don't plan to keep it lah. Actually, um, to be honest, I I I I, I you know if if I can, I will definitely keep this. Yeah, but you know like, we all riders all itchy finger like, right? Price, if the price is right, uh, you will give yes, it away la. But the price is quite high lah. I guess it's, it's, uh, <laughs> this type of things right is cannot be can, cannot find cheap anymore. You know, mm. and and the cost to the cost to upkeep to change the parts to is 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 not cheap as well lah. Yes, mm. and it, it's it's an appreciation thing. So hopefully you know my plan is to be able to hold on to this until uh, it turns into a classic plate. Would you thinking mm. of importing exporting it out? Uh, no, because I, if I, I I'm, I'm very selfish, you know. This bike, right? I must ride one. So if I export, right, then somebody can ride. <laughs> but then I cannot. No, it, it save it save you from the Singapore system, right? <laughs> but later, they'll save you the Singapore system. But I cannot ride. Then for what also, Ooh, right? I might okay. as well just keep it. Yeah. At least if it's in Singapore, you can buy back the bike. You know? Yeah. Uh, or you know, I can I can I can just deregister it, right? Then leave it at home every day. Look at it. Wake up, right? Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of selling it or whatever, uh, hmm. um. Who would you recommend the kind of rider, you know, to get a blackbird? Mm. I guess people that, that that like me, you know, you look you're looking at comfort, but you want something that is sporty, a bit, something that is a bit heavier, mm. um, something that has no electronics. So uh, apart from the CBS, right, which is not electronic, as you it's see, my my, right? my, my, mm -hmm. my CBS. Uh, is it uh, is it hydraulic? No, it's just it's just it's just uh, yeah, brake uh, the brake. Oh, uh. So uh, apart from that, right, you see my 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 dashboard is clean one. There is no traction control. There's nothing. Yeah, so you know, um, it's full power like, all the way lah. Like, you know, mm. no, no, no such thing as mode A, mode B, mode C. It's sport mode all the way lah. Like. The only electronic is the HI SS. Uh. Yes. <laughs> uh, sometimes the HI SS doesn't work properly also. Huh? Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> so, um, you know the um for this bike is it, is really uh somebody that appreciates sports. Mm -hmm. Sports. You know, you bold the word sports. You no, know, maybe put the sports. <laughs> yeah. And sport somebody, tour. Somebody, and somebody who knows the history about mm -hmm. this bike. Yes. Yeah. Um, because nowadays, as I said, the sports tour are all tracers. You know, what what other Busa. tracer? No, Busa is still this sports tour, Oh, okay. Uh, oh, yeah. To me, uh, sport, tracer, you got your Tenere. Uh. You got all these. You got all these bikes that are sports tourers, but they're not sports anymore. Mm. Yeah, so you look, look like adventure bikes, lah. Yes. So you're yeah. look, um, for somebody that's looking at for this type of a bit more old school sports. You know, lean forward a bit. Those people that you know, got tummy a bit. A bit of tummy, right? You can lean here, then wow, shook, you know. Don't, don't need your hands are free, that type. Yeah. <laughs> no wonder the uncles love this bike. Eh? Yeah, it, some of them, right? They say it's actually very comfortable. Uh. No, no, um, no pressure on the, on the wrist. <laughs> <laughs> For me, another like, ayah. Very, very, very tiring, like, ayah. Shouldn't have dropped my fork. It's heavy, it's, 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 it's good for, it's really, really good for touring, mm -hmm. uh, but that is all it's good for. It's really not good for city, it's not really good for mm -hmm. track. Um, you know, it, it's like a higher booster. You, know, you, you don't really bring a higher to a track. Um, but you, you do see blackbirds on drag strips. And fun fact about a blackbird, right? That a lot of people don't know that is you can put a turbo on a blackbird. Oh, okay. not it's not legally lah, but you can you can turbo the blackbird, right? And that is when the higher loses. Ah. <laughs> mm, see that guys. See that? <laughs> so there are a few there are a few blackbirds that have been turboed overseas. Yeah. Uh, quite cool lah. <laughs> Nice. Okay, cool, cool. Maybe when I did register lah. Yeah. <laughs> I have to say, I have to say I've, read about, I've read about the Blackbird before meeting you to do research about this bike. Eh? But now talking to you about it, I, I lagi respect the <laughs> history of the Blackbird. Mm -hmm, yeah. mm, it's something that us riders can appreciate, you know. Mm. Yeah, it's true. Which feature of this bike that you actually love the most? Wow. Uh, well, I love the whole bike actually, you know, <laughs> the package. Um, let me let, uh, okay. I need to think first. This one. Uh, okay, think, think. I think the engine to me is really the thing lah. You know, it's really bulletproof. It's very very smooth, and you know that 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 um is very responsive. When you're riding right, you can you know, even open throttle right. You can fly lah. I mean, it's a thousand cc bike. It's not like you know you open throttle like you know like some. I think the NC when I rode it, it was not very responsive. Mm -hmm. So we open right, you just do, 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 do. It's still it's, it's still you know it's a class two bike, but it's still not it doesn't have the kick yet. Mm. But this one you know it's heavy everything right, but it really has the kick. Just now you, you asked me right, what was my favourite memory, right? Mm -hmm. It was um, one that, uh, okay, I was in Singapore, you know, I was riding and I got cut off by this car. So what do you do when you get cut off? You drop a gear and try to disappear, right? Mm -hmm. I dropped the gear and I disappeared for real. <laughs> and it really showed me the power of the bike. You know, I normally, normally I short shift, so all the way I, I ride quite, quite conservatively. Uh -huh. That day I dropped, right? When I got off the bike, right, I had two Adam Apple. La. 
You know, it went up on it, up lah. Wow, I cannot. It was really, it was really too powerful. Mm -hmm. uh, and that is when I really learned that, okay, I need to tame this, tame this bike. So over the next few months, right, you know, when I take corners, right, I'll take it slow. And then over, the, over time, I'll take longer. So it's, it's a very humbling moment when I, when I rode this bike. You know, normally when I ride my other bikes, right, it's just whack ah. Mm. Right, it's, I mean, a Super 4, how far can you go on a Super 4? <laughs> right, you drop a gear, you whack also, you cannot disappear that fast one. Right, Greg, thank you so much yeah. for sharing your experience yeah, with man. the Honda Super Blackbird. I mean, wow, it's really a legendary bike and glad that we still have it still in Singapore on the roads. Eh? Yeah. <laughs> Even though it's disappearing. It, it's yes. going to be it's an endangered species. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, on the road, I ride so, so often on the road, right? I've only seen one other Blackbird on the road. Mm. Oh, I've only seen one only. Yeah, or that, and like uh, you say, I'm uh, riding it. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad that we actually came to the show to do this review. I mean, mm -hmm. at least we get it on video, you know, documented. Yes. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. You know, before this bike becomes an extinct species, or maybe uh, it, or you no. won't even bring it out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I mean, this bike is meant to be ridden, lah. It's not like you know, I I know those classic bikes that are um, that that like the Norton. I think somebody has a Norton in Singapore. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Classic plate. Um, that bike, if I, even if I had it, I also won't ride. Mm. Yeah, it's very. It's, it's, it looks very good, but you know, to run it is a bit, a bit difficult, la. But yeah. this bike, you know, is is meant to be run, uh, you don't you don't switch it on for 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 two weeks, right? Then you know, die. Yeah, you die. That thing. <laughs> okay, guys. So, um, any riders want to review that by us? You can touch us on our social media pages below. Blackbird riders out there, or ex Blackbird riders out there, if this bike brings back memories to you, share your experience in the comment section below. Whatever suggestion, feedbacks, also put in the comment section. Like and share this video if you're riding khakis, and don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to support us as well as our awesome sponsor, Liquid Moly. Click on the link below to check out their whole range of motorbike care products and use our promo code upon checking out. Yeah, that's it for the vlog. We will see you in the next one.